Hello everyone, it's September 24th, 2023. Welcome to a meditation on transformations. Transformation is an evolutionary pathway of all living things. Transformational foresight is the expansion of consciousness across and beyond time, space, and experience. And transformation itself is the co-creation of novel realities that bring us into greater states of regeneration, care, and love. Of course, our Transformations Retreat is about 51 weeks away now. It will be in Waldemar, Maine, the Topsoil Farms, and hopefully there's still space. If not, you'll be looking at the next Transformations Retreat. But if you are attending Transformations in 2024 and uh, the middle of September, then these meditations are certainly for you, but they can be for anyone. Today, I want to speak briefly on the difference between object foresight and process futuring. So what do I mean by object foresight and process futuring? Well, today's foresight in many ways has been co-opted by our systems of extraction, exploitation, exponentiality, and extrapolation, what I call often the four evil E's. And they have taken that challenging idea of transformative foresight and instead dumbed it down to be, let's find the trends that will make us the most money, that will drive our systems of mass efficiency, mass rationality, mass uh, productivity, mass consumerism, um, and capitalism uh, to its extremes. Our organizations, our governments, our social constructs and entities today need to be challenged and need leaders that will challenge from inside that there needs to be value prop beyond just money. We cannot continue in a world whose only value prop is consumption, monetization, and capitalization. We have to institute other value props in our organization if they're to be relevant, if they're to survive, if they're to be regenerative, if they're to be caring, if they're to be loving, if they're to be people-oriented and people-centered and human-centric, if they are to be planet-centric, I could go on and on and on. But most of our foresight today, because it is seen through those lens of the four E's, will tend to find or look for trends that are really points or objects in time, goals, things, something that I can sort of put my finger on and say, that thing is coming, and it will be bigger, or it will shrink and be smaller. And if it's bigger, I can use it, I can leverage it to really make my organization, or my country, or our pathway as humans more efficient, more productive, more consumeristic, more consumptive, more capital gain-wise. That's object foresight. And when we look through this lens, we tend to see the world in terms of objects, points in time, goals, something that I land on. I don't know if you've ever heard or not of the concept of philosophy of process biology or process philosophy or process ontology. Whitehead made this famous back in the day, but there's been many, many um, scientists, philosophers, big thinkers, writers, who talked about the idea that life and the cosmos and living systems don't move by thinking how to get to the next object, object to object to object. In many senses, those objects don't really matter. We've only placed an importance on them because of the systems that we operate within, which have dehumanized, um, taken life away, put life on the back burner, put planet on the back burner. Um, not really worried all that much about where the bigger future is really going. Just what is the next future that we can capitalize on? What is the next future we can consume? What is the next future that we can extract? And it does that best by looking for objects. And so it interprets foresight as another platform, another way to find objects and to extract them or to exploit them. But in reality, 
Living systems work on process. What is the bigger process or the roadmap between the objects? How do we see things unfolding? What is really happening? And if we were to look at foresight that way, then we start looking not at the objects, but at those things that are elements that precede an object or the bigger pathway and the convergence and the meshing and the melding of all of these things together that sort of say, where is the river and where is it headed? Not what is the boat on the river and how do I get in it? Process futuring sees a completely different set of trends. That might be a shocker for you, but it's true. So think about this, for instance, I'll just give you a couple examples. Today, we have the big trend of AI. But is that really a trend or is it a thing? We like to say it's a trend because again, in object foresight, it seems as if it's a trend, but really it's just an object. What is the actual trend that's taking place behind AI? Well, it could be several things. But one thing that it could be, when we think in terms of process, futuring, is this larger idea that's been taking place for a long time of increased misanthropy. Humans just aren't efficient enough, aren't productive enough, aren't, we're not able to consume them enough, we can't get enough capital out of them, <laughs> we can't hoard enough with them, and so therefore, let us create something that can take the place of humans. AI is just a final expression in many ways of that post-human capitalist world. But when we think about that process, it's been happening for a long time. When we see humans as being lesser than, we don't invest in them in terms of ultimate creativity or greater consciousness or connection to symbiotic living systems. That's the bigger thing that's actually taking place. And if you think about that and you see that process, then you can link it to many other things and stop looking at objects and look at the bigger process and understand what's really going on. That's futuring. Let me give you another example. Crypto, NFTs, the metaverse, those all seem like trends. Well, now we know NFTs for sure aren't. The metaverse pretty much isn't. And crypto, the jury is a little bit more than out. <laughs> but just a couple of months ago, those were all supposed to be multi-billion dollar, trillion dollar industries. And they sort of flopped. What does that speak to us? Well, there's many people that are talking about the idea of a techno technological hollowing out because our great technologies of the past, the railroad, the internet, great energy systems that we built. And now today, our great technological advancements of the metaverse and NFTs and blockchains and cryptocurrency. It's a hollowing out of technological innovation. That's been happening for a long time. It's a process. And we'll continue to see that is all as all that matters is to put the next big hype in front of people so that they will spend more money on it, but the technology is not solid or real and doesn't really help in the longer, bigger picture. It's a technological Halloween. That's the real trend. I'll give you one more example. Climate change. The trend of climate change. Again, is climate change a trend? Or is it a thing? Is it an object? Is it a... Uh, meta object, so to speak. Is it a, um, an end of things? A hyper object, as Morton would say. Um, or is the actual um, trend capitalistic systems collapsing? Because that, if we understand that process, then we understand not only would it lead to climate change, but it leads to a lot of other things like, for instance, authoritarianism. Is that a trend? Or is the real thing that's happening a shift that's taking place in the way we think about government and people and lives and people have had enough of this and there is a great turning, as Joanna Macy would say. This is a very different way to look at foresight. And when we look through a different lens, processes instead of objects, we see different trends. And the trends that are seen through object foresight, we start to wonder if those are trends at all or if they are actually ways for the systems that be to hollow out, as I had already said about technology, but in this case, hollow out our foresight. I spent about 10 minutes here. That's about the time that I wanna spend for each one of these meditations. 
I want you to think about this as we head into our transformations retreat in about 51 weeks. I'll see you on our next transformations meditation.